Morning. Today is Saturday, February 10th. It's not gotten daylight um, outside yet. It's almost seven o'clock in the morning and it's pouring down rain. And we're out here in the honey house fixing to make some fondant. Um, we've been feeding this stuff last few days. We've had six or seven days of dry weather <coughs> and uh, warm weather. Get up to probably in the 60s yesterday. And uh, man, the bees are going crazy and they're eating it fondant like crazy. It's amazing every time I look at them uh, how fast they're eating it. Uh, so I'm trying to keep it made up. I like to keep, my plan is to keep two bucket, buckets made up of all times, uh, but it's hard to do when they're eating it this quick. So, but this, this recipe I've been working on for years. I've been beekeeping for 25 years and have made, haven't made fondant every year, but made it several years. And I finally got the fondant the way I want it, uh, where it's easy to work with, easy to feed. Um, and I'm gonna go over the recipe uh, for it today. I don't put anything with a scent. I don't, uh, you know, they make a lot of stuff you can put in it and uh, extra stuff is supposed to be good for the bees and it probably is, but it, I feel like all they need is just the carbohydrate source and this is basically just pure sugar in a form that you can deal with. Uh, but this is what we're going for. This is some we made yesterday. This is, uh, let's over here a little closer so you can see it. This is what we're shooting for and what we'll end up with. But it's a really uh, easy to work with uh, patty. Let me get my bucket. Uh, patty's real easy to work with and uh, it works really good for being able to take that put on the bees this time of year. Hopefully, most of the hives, a lot of hives have got probably enough stuff on them, but you, it's really easy in beekeeping for bees to starve to death. A lot of times bee, new beekeepers don't realize how easy it is for a uh, hive to starve to death. Sometimes some of your best hives you think are done fine. There's a piece of it there. And it's, it breaks apart where you can break it it's easy to deal with but it uh, breaks apart where you can feed whatever size patty you want to a, a colony um, but even your best hives it's good and heavy uh, and that's fine but they got a lot of bees in there so this is a good insurance about uh, or to keep your bees from starving to death happens more often than we like to admit and more often than you think especially as a new beekeeper but this is what we're going for this is a like I said, patty we made up yesterday you can break it off into whatever size that you need. I break it off where it'll fit in the bucket. There's our bucket. So we're just gonna fill the bucket up with this patty. But this is what we're, our end result, and I'm gonna show you how to make it. And that's our last piece. Going in there, but all right. So it gives us a full bucket, one uh, pan of this. Um, as fast as they're eating it, probably need to go to a bigger pan. I might go to a bigger pan on a turkey fryer, um, but for now, this is sufficing. Um, I'll say a little bit about this honey house. This honey house was built last year. It's almost a year old. Let me get this over here. Honey house is almost a year old and it's really good for extracting honey. Uh, but it's also good for doing stuff like this. When you've got, um, you're making this stuff and your hands get sticky and uh, honey house has been a lifesaver when it comes to uh, doing stuff in here. I keep a little heater over there going. I keep it 65 degrees or so in here. So nothing ever freezes in here. It's insulated all the way around. Uh, and it's really good for doing things like this. So 
I'm gonna wash my hands and then we'll uh, get started on this recipe. All right, you just need a measuring cup. Uh, the amounts matter, uh, but for this size pan that I'm using, I use, it's four parts of uh, sugar to one part of water. So I'll fill this cup up twice. I call it a cup, it's uh, four cups. But I'll fill this up twice, it'll be eight cups of water. And then I'll fill this up uh, eight times with sugar. So uh, be what, 24 cups of sugar, I guess. Uh, I'll go in here and we'll get it going. You gotta be careful to get to a boil, I'll show you. Uh, when it first starts to boil, it will boil over. I've boiled it over several times. That's one reason you don't want to be in the kitchen doing this. So we're going to get our two cups of water. There it goes. There's two. So we got two parts of water and then we're gonna do eight parts of sugar. We'll get this lit. We just got a Coleman stove we use to cook it on. Turn it all the way up. Then I'll let that start getting hot. Um, I'll let it start getting hot before I start adding sugar to it. When it gets good and warm, we'll start adding sugar. I'll, I'll show you that. Be right back. Get our eight cups of water in here. It's uh, getting heated up. It ain't real hot yet, but it's hot enough. We can go ahead and add some, uh, start adding some sugar. This sugar really went up here lately from what it used to be. Um, but it's still worthwhile to feed it. Exactly, the cup's filled up exactly. We don't get too specific on that. We add it in here and just uh, stir it as we go. We'll put four in here and let that heat up and then we'll put another four. So that's one. Kind of see down in there what it's looking like. dissolve, hit on the heat, uh, hot liquid to dissolve that sugar. I think one thing that, that's one thing that helps them in this fondant is that the sugar has been dissolved, the granules have been dissolved, and uh, that and the fact that it doesn't harden up near as hard. But it is time consuming and it's hard to have time to do it. Not everybody, not everybody has time to do it as much as I do. So there's four, we'll let that sit for a minute. 
and uh, warm up good, and then we'll add four more of those. So we got actually 16 cups. Each one of those containers is four cups. So we got 16 cups of sugar in there so far, and we got 16 more cups to go. So we'll add that after this warms up here in a minute. All right, we've added um, 16 cups, four of our containers full of sugar, and we've mixed it, and it's been heating up. So it's pretty well uh, dissolved right now. Put about two tablespoons of uh, vinegar into it. It's the only other ingredient we add besides sugar. And now we're gonna go in with our other uh, four containers, 16 cups of sugar. First two go in pretty good, and you'll see when we put the second two in, they'll kind of sit on top a little bit, but they'll dissolve. This one's laying on top a little, if you can see it there. gets so thick it just can't take it on dissolve it that quick Mix this up good, the uh, chunks, it takes a minute, you gotta mix it a little, a little longer. Sometimes you can smash them up against the side and get them to uh, dissolve a little quicker. And we got one more cup to add. We've got some left in this bag. We're gonna dump that in there and then we're gonna get a little more to get our full uh, 16 cups of sugar. Uh, it actually be 32 cups. Um, all together, but to get our fourth container put in here. All right, so just so we're clear, it's a four cup container we put Filled it up twice, so we got eight cups of water. And then we filled it up eight times. Uh, so we got 32 cups of sugar. So eight cups of water, 32 cups of sugar. I usually go to, just to make it easier on me, I fill this up twice with water, fill it up eight times with sugar. And that's where I wanna be at. We're almost there now, I get a little more sugar in here. And we'll watch, uh, the next step, when this starts heating up, it will boil over. The re one reason you don't want to do this in the house is because if you're not, if you just have your back turned, it'll boil up and boil over uh, quicker than you can catch it. And it makes a mess when that happens. You do not want that to happen in your wife's kitchen. I did that once and was smart enough never to do it again. So we'll let this finish heating up and it starts getting to where it's uh, boiling. <clears throat> and I'll show you where we're at. And then we'll uh, get it up to temperature and keep it there for uh, about 15 minutes before we pour it into our mode. All right, we got a really thick mixture. We're letting that heat up. And I can tell, uh, like I said, I got a Coleman uh, propane stove. I can tell my tank's about to run out because my sound for my flame is less. And then another way you can tell is that you start getting frost on the bottom of your propane canister. So 
my flame under there is getting a little bit too low so i need to change out my canister so we'll do that now we'll get us another canister and put on there and get this to rolling but it's got to get to a boil like i say this is a critical stage uh because if you let that boil up it's going to foam every time and i'll show you that here in a minute all right we're starting to get heated up here it's starting to uh this is a critical stage. We've got all of our sugar in here. We've got a little vinegar in here. And this is the critical, most critical time that you got to watch it. You can't even, I can't even hardly turn my back on it. But when it starts to boil, it'll start rolling up and it's foam. It'll boil over. Once you, you'll turn the burner down to keep it from happening. Once you turn that burner down, instead of where it's an opaque, not clear, uh, color now it'll get uh, clear and then you really all you have to do then is pretty much watch it till it gets up to temperature but this is a critical time that you're fixing to make a mess I let it boil over the first time I did it in here this year it boiled over and I thought it would be fine I didn't think sugar water would catch on fire but it did I had a little flame going going there behind the pot um, so I had to stop everything, take everything out, clean everything up, and then put it back. All right, there you can see it start to boil. We got our burner turned up all the way as far as it'll go. But I had to clean everything up and then start over. And then the second time I was turned around washing stuff in the sink and it boiled over again. So I just stopped everything right off the bat that time. I didn't want another mini fire. But you gotta be careful with this stuff. You see the level rising now. So once it starts to do that, I'm gonna take this burner and turn it. Turn it down, we gotta let it go a little longer. I'm just gonna turn the burner down as far as it'll go without turning it off. You see it coming up on the thermometer there. But that foam will just keep going. All right, we're gonna, I'm getting nervous. We're gonna turn it down. Low a flame as we can get. There you see it still foaming, still coming up some. I'll turn it all the way off if I have to and then just light it again. Still turning it down just a little bit. I can still hear it, but it's pretty low. About as much as I want it to rise. Turn it down a little more. And quiet in here now. Drop my phone off in that, that'd be a mess. But this is the most critical stage of the whole thing. Once you get through this and you can, I never walk away from it, I always watch it the whole time, but you don't have to watch it near as close. Uh, when it does this, you have to be right on top of it. There you can see it start going down. So I'll start turning my flame up a little bit. After it gets down from this, then all we gotta do is watch the temperature. And we'll get it about 250. I'll show you on the, I think I can show you on the thermometer there. The temperature, and we wanna keep it there. I've made every mistake, every mistake known to man on this, but I, I've, there's a few steps that have to be done, but you have to get it to around 250, which is a little bit short of hardball stage. Um, and then you gotta keep it there for about 15 minutes. And, I always try to speed things up. I tried one time, I got it 250. As soon as it hit 250, I turned it off and it didn't turn out. There's been a lot of times this has not turned out. 
but I feel like I finally got it down. Now you can see it going down, the foam's going away. I'm turning it up some more. Now you can see it kind of clearing up. All right, we're going all the way back up with our flame, but we're gonna watch. All right, our burner's up how does it go? It's cleared up, it's got through the foaming stage. So now we gotta do is watch this thermometer. Let's see if I can show you. Where we're at, I don't know what you can see. On the thermometer, but we're gonna go about to about 250. One of the things that really helps a lot is this thermometer, you can take this cap off and you can clear that inside or get you can take this cap off right here and use one of these long uh, q-tips and clear all that uh, vapor from the inside of that so you can see it better so we'll do that here in a minute uh, get a couple more and see what it is all right just pull the cap off you need you a good candy thermometer i've got another one that's not near as good as this but even this one steams up inside but you can take this and just stick it down inside there and get that little bit of steam out so you can see what you're doing. I don't know, it's hard to see what you see. But we're going to go up to about 250 and hold it there for a few minutes. And we'll be another thing just from doing this so much is we'll be almost down to the bottom of our thermometer uh, by the time we get through with this process. We start getting our, we just use an upside down outer cover for a mold. It'll hold this whole batch and it'll make fondant patties that are that thick. So I use an inch and a half feeder ring and this fits perfect inside. I can put as much or as little as I want in there. I'm just using regular parchment paper is what I use. I don't use wax paper, I use parchment paper. And we're at the end of the row. But if you, um, if you fold it, it works better as far as keeping the sides down in there. You want that to kind of be flat on the bottom so that it'll, uh, your uh, fondant liquid won't go up underneath the, pour it on this part first and it holds it down and then you pour it on the other part and it makes the patty like we just pulled out at the beginning of the video. All right, there's our mixture. It's going good, it's looking the way it should. When it gets uh, closer to being done, those bubbles uh, will be a lot closer together and hold together a lot longer. You can kind of tell by the way it looks. I've almost got to where I don't need the thermometer, but I still use it because I it's a pain in the butt to do this work and spend this time and it not turn up. So we'll show you again once it gets up to uh, up to temperature. All right, I got it to uh, 250 degrees. Uh, it's taken about probably 15 or 20 minutes. Now I'm gonna let it sit here about 15 minutes or so uh, before I pour it in our in our mold. We've got over in our outer cover. Well, I, let's say 15 minutes where I let it cool down and I'll have to let it cool down. But it does take a lot of time. But hopefully it'll pay off. Hopefully I'm getting it somewhere where you can see it. 250, it's hard to see that thermometer. I understand, but it's right at 250 and it'll uh, pretty much stay there. So about 15 minutes and we'll be ready to uh, let it cool down. All right, the mixture's been there at about for about 10 minutes and it's starting to go, the temperature's going a little higher than I want it. And the bubbles are close together. It looks about like I like it. So now we're just gonna turn it off. So we're just gonna turn it off completely and let it cool. So we don't need our thermometer anymore. We can take it out, which it's very hot. Just lay it there and then we'll 
Stirring this will cool it quicker, uh, but we want to stir it and let it cool till it gets an opaque. This is a process that every year I forget about, and I'll pour it into the mold too hot without stirring it and letting it cool down, and it doesn't, uh, it won't turn out, it won't harden up. If you don't do this step, it won't harden up, it'll stay a liquid. It will, hard, it will harden up over time, but it's like the period of a couple weeks. It won't harden up immediately. So stir it and let it cool down. Another thing you can do to cool it down a little quicker is uh, make a water bath. I found that if you do make a water bath for it, <clears throat> I'll take it in the sink. I'll take it over here to the sink and just fill up. Take the part the sink. Um, but use warm water, don't use cold water. It cools it down too quickly so the outside gets hard and then the inside's still soft or liquid. So uh, if you make a water bath, do a warm water bath, not a cold. Works a lot better. I'm gonna go ahead and make our warm water bath to speed the process up a little bit. The next video is gonna be on the pollen patty. I don't have it as perfected as this one, but it's a lot more perfected than it was, I guess. Uh, but we'll... Uh, See if we can make some pollen patties yeah, to put on a hive, do a recipe, a pollen patty recipe too. So we got just enough uh, water in the sink. Let's set you back here. And we're gonna take our mixture. It's still clear right now. You can see that it's still, it's not opaque yet. And then we're just gonna set it down in our warm water bath. Stirring just helps kind of for it to cool at the same rate. What's on the uh, outside of the pan will cool faster than what's on the inside if you don't stir it. And you can feel, when you touch the uh, outside of the pan, you can feel with your spoon that it's hardening, starting to get harder. You can see it, see it starting to get less clear now. Can't see the bottom of the pan anymore. It's starting to get that opaque um, color, I guess you would say. It, but this is a very important process. Make sure you do this if you want to get good, um, good patty, good fondant patties out of it. Okay, it's really starting to get opaque now. So I think we're good. We can go ahead and pour it in our pan. So I'll set you back a little bit, and wipe the water off the outside of this bowl, and then uh, we'll pour it in our in our pan. All right, here's what we got. It's firming up on top, so it's ready to pour. Pour it on this side first. It kind of seals it down so the fondant, wet fondant can't get up underneath of it. And then our um, outer cover holds the whole bunch. Makes a thick patty, you have to use the feeder rims. I was making thin patties, but it's too much trouble, basically. I'll start making it thick, and then you end up with a paste in your pan. You can take that spoon and then clean that up. I know a lot of people use sugar candy, and if you do, that's fine. Every beekeeper can do what they want. And it's certainly better than nothing, but they'll take this a lot faster than they do the sugar candy. Because of the texture of it, it's just a softer, easier for them to consume. Um, if you bite into some of that hard candy we put on the hives, it, you can break your teeth on it, it's so hard. And I have had some you know, you just figure they're not, just not needing it. 
because they don't take it all year long. They'll take some of it, but I think they're just not able to take it. I've, I've used this beside the hard candy, and there's no comparison. So it's pretty much, it's hardening up as I'm just talking. But that's pretty much everything. We'll clean this uh, pot out with hot water. It's not uh, too difficult to clean out. It doesn't, like I said, it doesn't get rock hard. It just gets uh, consistency. I showed you a while ago, I'll show you again. Um, but you can see this is hardening up nice. It makes a nice uh, patty that you can put on there and not get sticky, it's not wet. So you don't get a lot of sticky. Usually when I take it out to put on the hives, um, I'll just take a wet rag with me in the truck and uh, keep a wet wire rag and then I'll wipe my hands off on the wet rag if I'm going one of my out yards. Uh, but that's hardening up nice. You see it turning opaque. It'll turn almost white. Uh, and it makes, again, makes a patty like this and it's something you can work with and you can break off um, and then feed whatever size that you want to. And they're, like I say, they're taking it like crazy. I uh, put several patties on my hive and uh, Kevin come over yesterday and made some and his are tearing it up. He had a whole bucket full. He's got, I think, four hives. I told him I thought it would last two weeks, but I'm the way they're taking it and what it looks like, I'm not sure it'll last a, even a week. So, But anyway, that's uh, making a pollen patties. That's the recipe. Uh, eight cups of water, 32 cups of sugar, two tablespoons of vinegar, and the steps that I just listed. Just make sure you stir it while it cools down and starts getting opaque before you turn it in there. Uh, make it a nice patty, um, and I don't know of anything they take better in the wintertime. I, if I had a space to feed it, you can't, those feeder shims you have to pull off in the springtime uh, because they'll start building burk home in, in there. But I wouldn't care to feed it in place of a liquid. I think it's just as good as feeding a liquid feed. Um, it's really, uh, really good for them. And I have seen them draw some comb on it too. So it does really good. I, I, I feel like that's about as good as I can get the, uh, fondant patty. And, uh, next video, I'll show you how I do a pollen patty. Uh, Dave Hansberry would have a cow. <laughs> Don't tell him that I'm feeding pollen this early. Uh, you just got to watch them. The uh, pollen will make them, uh, rear brood a lot quicker and then a lot more brood, a lot more bees, a lot more bees eat a lot more honey. So you just gotta stay on top of them more. But I'm hoping to expand. That'll help me to expand my apiary, uh, feeding pollen early. And uh, I, I think it'll be okay. Just don't tell Dave what I'm doing. All right, hope you watched or uh, liked the video. Uh, appreciate you watching till the end and I'll see you in the next one, thanks.